Hey, welcome everyone. My name is Jeff Smith. I'm so excited to be talking to you today at Oracle Cloud World. I'm on the database team and we're bringing some exciting new technology to the Oracle Cloud. Our session today is called Query Any Database in the Oracle Cloud with Just Your Browser. And I would say our secondary title is uh, SQL Developer Web. So this is the technology that we're bringing to the Oracle Cloud. Oracle SQL Developer is a very well-known technology and brand. Uh, folks are used to using it in their desktop. And by folks, I mean, somewhere between the neighborhood of five and seven million people have been using this tool for almost 20 years. It's a Java application. It's free. It's included with your Oracle database. We don't really care where that Oracle database is running, but we really do like it when you're running it in the Oracle cloud. And of course, this desktop application will work just fine with your cloud databases, but you're installing software on your uh, local machine, plus some Java, and you're running that across the network. And once you set all that up, it's great, but wouldn't it be better if it could be even easier than that? And just in case you've never seen or, or you're not familiar with what SQL Developer can do, let me just give you a quick tour of the features. So primarily, it's the graphical user interface for the entire database. So Easily, you can browse the contents of your database. You can point and click on things versus having to know how to code it. It's great for entry-level folks. It's good for productivity folks. And it's good for experts who are just looking for some help with their uh, mouse and keyboard versus having to know all of the code by, by heart. It's also an integrated development environment for the programming language of the database, which is PL SQL. So it's got a debugger. It's got documentation tools. You can uh, generate uh, test scripts. You can execute the code. And of course, you can integrate it with source control. So all of the things that your day-to-day -day developers are looking to achieve with the database can be done with this application. It's got a full-blown data modeling solution built in. So if you're one of those crazy people that thinks they should design something before they build it, you can totally use our technology to do that for our administrators. Uh, they need to create, update, uh, patch an instance, do a backup, add space, manage security, view audit trails. All of that's built into the tool. It's got some nice reporting features. And let's be honest, the most popular feature in this whole tool is exporting data to Excel because Excel still rules the business world. That's definitely in there. And we also have a command line interface built on this tech. So if you want to go pure keyboard and, and take all of the distraction out of um, your screen space, you know that's that's nice as well. Now, uh, in terms of the web and SQL Developer web, what we've done is we've built a single page web application, and the only thing to use this is you need someone to set it up for you and then give you the URL to log in. So nothing to install on your machine, no Java uh, runtime engines to maintain, you're not using up any uh, disk space. Everything's just there right in your browser, which means you can theoretically run this in your phone and it works a-okay, -okay, but if you've got a nice tablet, it works great there as well. This is also still free. It's powered by our uh, REST engine that we have for the database. It's called Oracle REST Data Services. Sometimes you'll hear us refer to this as ORDS. And if you see this application out in the wild today, there's a little, uh, call out to it in the bottom of the screen, powered by awards. But on our main screen, we just got quick boxes to a lot of those same features I described to you in the desktop tool. So we haven't ported 100% of the desktop features into the browser yet, but we've made a really good um, start on that. And this is all available in the application as it is today. So let's see if I missed anything. Nothing to install, check. Just clicking the link, check. So again, this is all about ease and convenience. And everyone today is pressed to do more and more and have less time and less resources to, to achieve that. So I mean, really the goal here is, especially in cloud, if you can spin something up with the click of a button, use it until you're done and then toss it away, that's great. And if we can build the tooling into that, um, interface and set of procedures too. That that's even better, which is what we're really talking about today. So what we have in SQL Developer Web today is basically available in two different places, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. But once you get there, you got several core features. We have the SQL worksheet where you can do um, ad hoc queries and scripts. 
Um, we've got mind-blowing new technology in the database from the database team. So we've got something called the um, multilingual engine that uses our Graal VM. So you can actually not just do SQL and PL SQL in the database. Now you can also do JavaScript and Java in the database, which is kind of cool. We give you nice editors to interface with all of those languages. And we also give you editors to interface with all the types of objects in your database. So you need to create and edit a table, create and edit a view, table space. You get all of that stuff built into the browser. If you want to monitor and manage your database, like, hey, what's taking a long time to run? Where's their expensive queries that need tuned? Um, what accounts are about to expire? Who needs their passwords reset? You know, um, what alerts do I have firing into the alert logs? Nice report screens for that built into the tool. And then also just hardcore application development. So again, back to that PL SQL work, maybe you need to build some REST APIs, um, or maybe you want to use our um, JSON document store feature in the database where you basically take um, the Oracle database and you treat it as sort of like a Mongo style um, uh, JSON repository. All that's built into the tool. And where we had it um, until today on this announcement is we've had it built into the autonomous database offering in um, OCI or Oracle Cloud. And that's one specific database service. So this is our fully managed service where we take care of upgrades and backups and you basically get access to your instance where you can do all of the, the database work itself. And we take care of all of the painful stuff for you. So what you have in the console is a link here to something that says database actions. That takes you to a punch out to a separate site. So once you do that, you're no longer in Oracle Cloud. You're talking to our mid-tier that we have set up to give you access to your autonomous database via SQL Developer Web. The other option you have, and you can do this for any database anywhere, is if you take our mid-tier technology, if you take the ORDS web server and you install it and configure it, you can get access to this tech um, and point it to any database that you want. But that's you managing that, that's you taking care of that. And yes, you can do this in cloud, but you're gonna stand up a compute node and you're gonna maintain connection pools and you're gonna do a lot of work um, to make that available. So these two offerings today are very, very good, but we're about to make this much, much nicer. So we're getting to the core of what I want to talk about today. So uh, this is not new tech. It's relatively new, but I mean, it's, we've started on this project in 2017. It made its debut in the Oracle Cloud in 2018. We made it available for customers to run in their um, IT centers and on your laptop in about 2019. It's where we put the majority of our development focus and time, hours, and blood. Um, and over the past three, four years, um, this is the future. Uh, this is actually the present and the future of our tech. So coming up, or as you're seeing this now in October, we're going to take a lot of those fancy screens that you saw that we have available today for autonomous, and we're going to make it available for any Oracle database running across all of Oracle Cloud. So let's talk about that. So again, we started back in 2018 and it had a decent um, UI and it was available in our Gen 1 cloud and it was also available on day one with the Oracle Autonomous, both the dedicated and the shared infrastructure, but again, only for that specific cloud offering. It gave it a really nice facelift last year, it gave it a much more powerful editor, but the real big, um, I would say, evolution of this tech is coming now with the OCI migration. So in the autonomous world, let's say you've got 10 autonomous databases. To access SQL Developer Web for each of those autonomous databases, you'd have to log in to each and every one of those instances on the console and, and link over to it. Uh, maybe you don't have 10 databases. Maybe you have 100 databases. That's going to get very frustrating, and it's not going to be a good user experience. You might not be using any autonomous databases. You might just be using, um, or not just just, you might be using one of our powerful Exadata services, or you might spin up a compute node or a Kubernetes cluster and drop an Oracle instance into that, and you want the same modern cloud-friendly um, user experience. 
So now what you're going to be able to do is stay in OCI. So stay in the Oracle Cloud Console. So all of your services are right there. And you're just going to toggle over into SQL Developer Web as one of the features in an Oracle Cloud service. And you're going to be able to browse your compartments. And for each of those compartments, you're going to allow to have um, multiple connections defined. And I'm going to talk about connections in a second, but just think of connections just like you would in the desktop tool. So you've got a database running somewhere. You've got a username and a password for that somewhere. Of course, you've got the name of the database and the location of the database. And the application just says, oh, okay, he wants to go work on that database over there. Let me go bring that up. So we've brought that into the browser. I'm going to have a drop down so I can stay in screen on a single page and say, hey, let me run this query on this database. I'm going to be done with that. I'm like, oh, hey, I got slightly different data over here. What would happen if I go run that over there on that database? So I don't have to leave the screen. I don't have to log in and log out. I can stay in screen and just use the drop down um, where the connections are listed to access the system that I want to work on. So much more uh, seamless, uh, fewer clicks, um, fewer desktop tabs open. Um, and again, it's opening up this power that we have for autonomous to all of the database, Oracle database offerings on Oracle Cloud. So you stand up a compute node, like I mentioned that, um, you've got the, the VM based instances, we've got the EXA instances across Oracle Cloud. You spin up one of those um, boxes and you got in your console all the information for that. We're gonna be adding a button here that says add connection and then let me toggle over into um, SQL Developer Web. Um, but we also have a separate developer service um, under developer tools. It's called database tools. And this is where you'll define your connections. This is where we maintain your passwords. We securely store them in the vault service. And if there are any um, TLS encryption keys or certificates that you need for connections, we'll sort those there for you as well. So it stays extremely safe. Um, we're not exposing uh, the keys to your castle to anyone. The other nice thing is, let's say you've got a database not available on the open internet, but you still want to work with it um, in your console. Let's say you've got a database behind a private endpoint. We're automatically integrated with the Bastion service. We can spin up a Bastion on the fly and create a network tunnel to your database on that private endpoint and give you the same set of tools to work with your system. The nice thing about this database tool service that we have today is, is this is our infrastructure. This is our code. This is our web server. This is our connection pools. So you're not standing up words. You're not maintaining anything. All you're doing is you're creating and working with your Oracle databases and you're defining these connections. Once the connections are defined, then you get to start working um, with SQL Developer Web. So you, you literally start with, hey, what connection do you want to use? And if you don't have any connections yet, there'll be a button here that says create connection. And you'll just walk a standard um, set of questions that you've been answering for the last, you know, in my case, 25 years almost. Like, OK, what do you want to name the connection? Hopefully something better than what I've named mine here, <laughs> DB connection. Maybe I'll call it uh, dev or prod or test. Or maybe I'll put the name of the user in the connection name. Use something descriptive so you understand it when you see it. And attached to that connection, you have a username and a password. Again, that password is not being stored anywhere in our service. We're storing it as a secret in the OCI vault service. So they're maintaining that. Um, if your passwords age out, and hopefully they do, that would be a good security practice. Um, you update that secret in the vault. And whatever application you've set up in OCI to use your connection, because you, other applications can use these connections. It's not just for SQL Developer Web. Although we built it for us, we're being nice and we're sharing it um, with other services. And you can use it yourself in your own, uh, let's say, Java applications if you wanted to using the um, OCI Java SDK. So you've made connections before, in my case, for like 25 years, which is kind of sad and funny. Um, you're going to name your connection, hopefully give it a good name so there's some context there when you see it, you know what you're working on. Then you're going to have your username and your password. The password is going to be stored securely in the OCI vault. Uh, we'll have a secret to go access that, and it can be used for us to open up a worksheet. And then we're going to need to know the network address 
of the database so we can get there. And then we're going to need like the, the port. So the nice thing is when you define these connections, we can actually query um, the control plane in OCI and actually query all of the different database services. And we can say, oh, Jeff's already got an autonomous database. He's got an XSCS. He's got a cloud at cut. You know, he's got, we can see your list of databases and we can help guide you through creating these connections. Now, the nice thing is you only do this once. Once you've done this, then you're going to be able to just use them going forward. And we're going to have this SQL worksheet that has a ton of features in it. So here's just a, a silly select star from. Hopefully your queries are going to be more interesting than mine. But OK, so select star from all users. And then I get this uh, standard text output um, down below. And we're going to be storing a history of all your queries. So as I'm doing all my work, I've got access um, to everything that I've done previously, which is which is kind of nice. So it's got a lot of the the features and look and feel experience, even the same keyboard shortcuts that you've been using in the desktop tools again since like 2005. It's not just the worksheet. So over here on the left, you got this navigator with like a drop down. You know, it's got a list of schemas and a list of object types. I can browse the contents of the data dictionary without writing any code. I can open a table and browse it. Or if I don't have any tables, we have a guided interface to both import data from Sally an Excel spreadsheet to even just creating an empty table. And of course, running your queries and scripts. That's what people are really looking for. And then also, you've got a bunch of data in your database. You needed to get it out to friends and family in their favorite format, which is almost always Excel. Yes, you can do that too. So let's talk a little bit more about this. Again, connections are established. If you come in here and there's nothing there, you're going to click the new connection button, and it's just going to prompt you to fill out those prompts. And then once you're good to go, that's the active connection. You're going to do the work when you're ready to go to another database. You don't open a bookmark. You don't log in. You don't log out. You just really toggle the drop down and say, hey, I want to go from this connection to, to that connection. And that's it. The engine tied to the the browser underneath will just update on the fly and the next query you run, the next drop, the next truncate, the next insert, the next select you run will go onto the different database, or maybe with the same database, but a different database user. Then once you're there, um, what we have brought over for V1 of this service is, the, is just the SQL worksheet. But this SQL worksheet's got a ton of awesome features built into it. So code completion, syntax checking, I mentioned the SQL history, uh, query formatting, and a lot more. I'm going to tease a couple of those things with you right now. Um, so for example, my queries aren't generally the best, and sometimes I need some help tuning that. We have a really nice visual execution plan feature uh, built into the browser. So as I'm running my queries, I can see quickly where parallelization is kicking in, or maybe it's not. I can see where partitions aren't are not being used. For some reason, it's doing a full table scan instead of using indexes. And the display there will guide you to exactly where the problem area of the plan is. This is a pretty simple plan. A lot of plans have hundreds of steps. It's set up out of the box to direct you to the steps that have the highest cost or CPU um, load, where the most pain is to direct you to where the, the work needs to be done. You might come in to a very sad database. It's very empty. There's nothing in it, no data. We all have test data laying around, you know, spreadsheets, CSV files we've picked up over the years, or we've got Oracle databases that are running locally and you want to import those into the Oracle Cloud, there's going to be a lot of utilities built into this browser for you to move that data into the Oracle Cloud. So even on day zero, you've just created your database, you've just created your connection, and you're logging into the web screen, you're going to be able to create a table from scratch with a few points and clicks. Or if you don't even want to do that, here we go. You can uh, drag and drop multiple files into the browser and we'll automatically create the tables and load that data for you. Um, I use this feature all the time. Uh, it can be interactive. You can come in and kind of like toggle on and off stuff that you want included uh, in your data uploads. But by and large, most of the time, I don't have to do anything. I just drag and drop and say rip and roll 
um, and it comes in and I can usually tweak it after the fact. Um, we also have a really powerful editor built in. Um, so it's hard to demo on a PowerPoint sometimes, but as you're working and you're massaging your data and you're running your queries, um, you have the same powerful tools that you're used to things like in like VS Code, for example. So we have this um, code palette that you can use to access macros and all the fancy search and replaces. So you don't have to have something like VS Code um, up and going on your machine if you don't want to. You literally can just stay in your browser um, all the time. And it's not just about getting data out. You need to be, or not just about getting data in, you also need to share it back out. So we have all of your friendly popular formats. You can take query results or just the contents of entire tables and export it out too. So as insert statements, HTML, uh, JSON, uh, even JSON formatted easier for a human to read, XML, the limited text, um, CSV, so you can quickly get it into Excel. Again, it's it's point and click as much as possible, but if you want to write some code to do this, um, you can do that as well. Let's talk a little bit about how this works. So I really don't care how your Oracle database came to be in your Oracle Cloud account. Um, we have specific Oracle database services that are either um, Oracle managed or customer managed, and even the Oracle managed ones, we do provide services databases possible. Um, for example, we have um, XSCC, but we also have things like just Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Compute Nodes. Like I can spin up a Linux um, entire box, or I could spin up uh, just a Docker node and then an SSH into that and manually define an Oracle database. The only difference there is, is our control plane isn't going to have any record of that database. So um, the cloud, our cloud, won't know about your database, but you'll know about it. And if you know about it, then you'll know how to create a connection to it. Um, for the other databases that are the official offerings, as you create the AE's databases, they put records into the control plane. So when we go to create connections, get a nice guided walkthrough. Um, it's like, oh, hey, we noticed you have these six databases here. Do you want to create a connection to one of those? And we know exactly how to get um, to that database. You're not going to be managing any of the mid-tier, like if you were installing ORDs yourself in your own data center. In our database tools service, our free developer service, we're going to have ORDs there available to run to create connections to the databases and use REST APIs to interact with those databases. So when you're running queries through the worksheet or you're using um, the execution plan visualizer, we have... APIs, REST APIs specifically, that allow us to do that work in the database. It's very, very nice. It's the same technology that you can run again today uh, on premises if you want. I, I run it on my laptop all the time for uh, customer demos, for example. So there's really nothing extra for you to maintain and manage. It's just another free thing that comes with your um, cloud subscriptions. Um, and if you're even using uh, the Oracle always free um, cloud, uh, you know, a lot of this technology is going to be available to you as well. So this is literally uh, a zero cost service. The technology that we use to build this, is just an HTML5 app. We use an Oracle um, JavaScript uh, platform called Oracle Jet. And we're building these screens um, natively into the OCI console. So um, it, it it's not going to look like it's native cloud. It is native cloud. It literally is. So another big difference um, from what this is going to be to how it's been previously is if you have um, in the autonomous service today, and it'll be this way for a while, although you can still use um, SQL Developer Web Native in OCI to, to connect to your autonomous databases if you want. Before you can log in in Autonomous, you have to do something called REST enabling a schema, which basically registers a, a user for web access, and it also allows that user to host REST APIs. And it's uh, something that ORDS used, and something that we took advantage of to make SQL Developer um, 
possible or SQL developer web possible. That's no longer going to be required for these connections. There's literally nothing to install in the remote database. Um, there are no changes to the um, schemas uh, or the users required to, to use this tech. Um, if our cloud service can see um, your database in, uh, in your VCN or through a, a bastion or an SSH tunnel, we're going to be able to connect to it and use everything that you've seen here. So even, even more seamless than what we have in the autonomous experience today. Now, there's a lot more in the SQL Developer desktop application and what we've poured it into SQL Developer web than just the SQL worksheet. So for example, um, we have support for uh, Liquibase for doing change management on your um, schemas that are there for your applications. So when you need to deploy updates uh, to your database as you've upgraded your applications, um, it handles dependencies and it allows for rollbacks and it's got a lot of nice reporting built in. Um, our database tools supports this technology and we have nice reporting for that built into SQL Developer Web. Um, that's not available today. What we've got today is the SQL worksheet. What we've got coming in phase two of this later this year, I hope, is we're gonna bring in the rest or almost most of the rest of these features. So significant things would be like guided wizards for running data pump. That's crucial for doing large amounts of data imports and exports to your database. And you don't have to write any code for that. Literally just point, click, walk the wizard, answer the questions, and we set up the job, we run the job, we get the logs, we allow you to download the dump files. We can read the dump files out of the object store. Again, it makes it really, really easy to get data to and from your database. Uh, managing users, you need to create a new user and give them a, a link that they can go use to log into the service, or maybe someone um, is passwords about ready to expire and you want to reset that for them. It's a nice graphical user interface for doing all of your user management. You can grant storage quota and revoke roles, all with point and clicks. Um, Performance Hub or Perf Hub, as it sometimes is known, um, is available. It's built into SQL Developer Web. So being able to pull up Perf Hub and getting like a an AWR report or a top top SQL or a, a real-time SQL monitoring report for your instance. And really now for any Oracle instance in all of Oracle Cloud, that's that's super useful. If you've got access to um, the automatic workload repository, um, you're gonna be able to generate reports for that. But even just general session reports will show you sessions that have locks, wait events. You can drill down into expensive SQLs and see what their execution plans are and see what sort of IO overhead is on the system. Browsing alert logs, there's lots of boxes here and we're adding more and more of these. So what you're gonna have in V1 is just the SQL box and literally we'll take you straight to that SQL box. In V2, when we move the rest of the application into Oracle Cloud, you're gonna get almost everything else added as well. So it's almost gonna be like a completely different <laughs> application later this year. For phase three, we're gonna have the service. And once we know how to connect to your database and give you a SQL worksheet, we also want it to be really easy for you to do things like deploy, um, upgrade and maintain Oracle REST data services and application express. So if you wanna deploy those, you can then start doing things like building your own low code web applications using Apex. And of course you can use ORDS to do things like deploying REST APIs. So a lot of people know ORDS today because it's what makes SQL Developer Web available, but it was originally built to make Oracle REST APIs available for your Oracle database. It's got a bunch of other features as well. Um, but once we have this plugged into the database tools service, instead of just giving you a SQL worksheet and maybe a screen to manage sessions with the click of a button, you'll be able to do things like, hey, I want to deploy ORDS and or Apex. And then you can start building your own REST APIs and your own low code web applications for any of those databases in OCI. And you're not gonna to have to manually SSH into that box and download Apex or download ORDS and configure it and go, you know, it's gonna be all nice and wizard driven and we're gonna take care of that for you. 
So roadmap, the SQL worksheet uh, should be available now, or if not now, here shortly um, in the Oracle Cloud infrastructure. And then later this year, the rest of SQL Developer Web. And then sometime early next year, hopefully, we'll have um, the ability to do those ORDs and APEX deployments. And eventually, we even want to have our third-party database migration technology that we have um, available in SQL Developer Desktop also built into the browser. So you could do things like, hey, point to the SQL Server database and migrate that into an Oracle database all in your browser. That would be a nice whiz bang feature. It is on our roadmap and we plan on doing it. So if we scroll back to the very first slide, I said running queries in your browser for any database in OCI. And it's not just Oracle databases in the Oracle Cloud. What about MySQL? So there are two MySQL services. We have the MySQL database and we also have the MySQL HeatWave cloud service that are running um, in production today. The database tool service where your connections are defined support these MySQL databases. And we allow you to also open up SQL worksheets um, even behind private endpoints. And we can even launch um, uh, Cloud Shell MySQL prompts um, to get you quickly into your database. So you've got a SQL history, you've got code completion, you've got a parser for syntax highlighting. This is available today for MySQL. And we're probably going to be looking to extend this to other types um, of database in the Oracle Cloud. But for today, it's Oracle Database and MySQL. Um, I'm really excited to start showing this to people. And I'm really excited to hear from you folks using this uh, in your tenancies. If you want to get started on this, the easiest way is to go set up um, an always free Oracle Autonomous Database and then go set up a database tools connection. And then once that's there, you can just toggle over to the SQL worksheet and tell which connection to use. And you're going to start running your, your queries and importing your Excel spreadsheets and, and all of that jazz. No words to install, no schemas to words enable for auto rest. Just define the connection, tell us where your database is, and you're good to go. There's so much more I could have shown you today. They only gave me 30 minutes. I'm sorry. but. Our technology and we're, myself and the rest of the product team were pretty easy to find. If you want to learn more about SQL Developer, you can always go to oracle.com slash SQL Developer. If you like to tweet, uh, we do too. We've got Twitter accounts for Oracle SQL Developer and Oracle REST Data Services. Uh, and if you ever find me on my blog, uh, thanks for hanging out with my mom there and making me feel good for reading my articles. Um, you can always reach out to us via email. Just Google Chris Rice or myself. Um, my email address is here. I would love for your feedback. Or if any of you would like a custom tour, uh, give me a ring, and uh, we'll set up a custom session for the developers and your organization, and we'll get you up and running. Thanks, everyone. I'm very excited to participate in this year's Oracle Cloud World, uh, and I look forward to seeing you soon.